And we're back in the room once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once more to the Cayman Show, the show that has commonly come to be known as the gift which keeps on giving. And there's no exception to that rule whatsoever this evening. We'll get into that in just a moment. Before we step into these gentlemen, allow me to give a big shout out to the Gurness FC under nines who we're sponsoring. Um, I'd like to say enjoy your presentation evening on Saturday night. They've got a great set up there in the Gurness. Gurness under nines. Kill it dead, own it. I know you just will. So, meanwhile, back in the room, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you all Dan, he's the singer of the band. Chris, he's the bass player of the band. Dead Romantic, welcome to the show. Gentlemen, how the devil are you? What's up? Oh, how are you doing? Doing great, man, doing great. As mentioned at the top of the show, a little on the hot side. Uh, I don't just mean in terms oh, of the yeah. ladies, but... Uh, you know, gimmicked up and whatnot. No fans, no aircon. We're not used to this over here, but uh, you know, it's it's nice to see that big yellow thing in the sky, nonetheless. It's lovely. It's killer, but I find it hard to complain about it because it's like, I mean, it's so rare that we get some nice bit of sunshine. So can't really complain. I just pretend that I love it and sit out and just sweat like I can feel horrible, but just pretend yeah. that it's all fine. Well, I'm, having, well, I'm, I'm having no problems complaining about it. <laughs> I'm finding complaining about it quite natural, to be honest with you. I'm hating every second of it. And I can't oh, man. Well, thunderstorms tomorrow, apparently, so uh, or the day after. So, you know, let's make the most of it while we can, gents. So... For, for people who are unfamiliar, people on Planet Cayman who may not have heard of Dead Romantic, gents, just give us a little brief introduction to yourselves as a band, if you could. Uh, how, where, when and why did it all get together and what's been going on? Um, so basically, um, during the sort of lockdown the first time, or in fact, no, just before, just before actually, yeah. Um, I was singing with a, a cover band and a video popped up online on Facebook. Um, someone had shot or whatever, and, and it just sort of went out there into the ether. And uh, and then this guy comments on it and says, uh, oh, who's this singer? Um, and it was my wife actually put on there, oh, this is Dan Taylor, um, get in touch, whatever. So then he comes up, he goes, oh yeah, my, uh, my name is Mike Krampus. I'm a producer, I own a record label. I'm this oh, wow. and, that. And, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I bet yeah, you sure whatever. you are. This guy's trying to lure me into his house. Yeah. Pinocchio, like, yeah. I don't even know what he's got planned. <laughs> um, so then, uh, yeah, I eventually sort of, we started talking and stuff. We were talking about musical interests and all that kind of things. Eventually got sort of uh, just about to sort of meet up and start working on some stuff and lockdown hit. And it was like, Oh my god! Like, what a bastard! Worst yeah. time ever. Um, so I mean, we we carried on chatting and sort of I was sending him bits of ideas, songwriting ideas. He was sending bits and bobs back, of like what we were talking about and stuff. And then eventually, when we had that sort of break mid lockdown, we managed to uh, get together and like have a proper sit down and we started writing. Um, and we just sort of stumbled across the sound really while we were writing, and it all kind of blossomed and we were like right let's make a go of it so we started looking around for like people to to sort of come on the journey with us and that's when we found chris and and sam and and dave and we all sort of got together and it just kept sort of it feels great now it, it feels like i don't know complete i guess so mm, meant we're to just be. waiting to get out there and, and do our thing now Wicked. So it's, you are officially a lockdown band then, I'd say, yeah? Yeah, I guess oh, so. Yeah, you yeah, you yeah. could call us that. I mean, I don't know how many. I'm looking forward to seeing how many lockdown albums come out in the next few months. <laughs> but I can certainly say that that's not what our album's going to be. Um, we don't have any songs want, called yeah. Isolation. Uh, <laughs> there's no songs written about viruses or, or anything like yeah. that. So... Um, yeah, but we, I suppose you could classes as that because that's where we, I mean, that's where we found it. But I suppose, yeah, we got the time to, to, to sit down and write. Yeah. So because of what was going on, it kind of did us a little bit of a favor in a way. So mm. we had time to sit down and concentrate on it and focus. And, and we had time for sort of rewrites and things of certain songs. So it, it's had its upsides. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. I suppose. 
destruction often breeds creation, doesn't it? And, and you know, it's a case of then time is something which you had, I suppose, bucket falls off during lockdown. You know, it's like for myself, I was just like, right, what do I do? I'm stuck in four walls on a roof. What the hell do I do? I know I'll buy a microphone. I'll start podcasting, you know? So, uh, hey, here I am. But for yourselves, yeah, yeah. create the band. Uh, start getting creative. Start writing. Uh, start yeah. recording. And eventually, you, you only met in lockdown. Is that right? As a band? Uh, yeah, none of us. Yeah, none yeah. Of us, none knew each other before uh, the world ended. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, God, we are a lockdown band, aren't we? <laughs> that's Blimey. awesome. Fantastic. Well, we're coming out the other side now, gents, as well. So there's some exciting stuff going on. I've been looking at some of your stuff on the internet, and people have been complaining that you've nearly broke the internet with two songs, guys, as well. So yeah. my glasses are off to you for that. Um, so, yeah, Thank we've you. got Kiss With A Lie, um, and yesterday, both a neon 1.6 million views. That's absolutely incredible. Yeah, no, you know, small, small modest numbers. You know, <laughs> nothing, uh, nothing too crazy. It's That's insane, nuts. mate, honestly. It's did, crazy. Like, did you expect we, we, that? Well, that's what I was just going to say, is like, we obviously had faith in what we were doing. We, we love the tunes because, I mean, if we didn't, we wouldn't have released hmm. them or whatever, so... Like we had faith in them and we love them and we love playing them and, and we enjoyed writing them. But the response has been pretty overwhelming, to be fair. It was like we put it out and we was like, yeah, th we think these are good. So we think these are going to do good. And then that happens. It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just sort of happened. So then you I broke mean, the freaking internet. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's really nice to know that people have enjoyed watching them, though. So. I mean, thank you to everybody who's watched it, I suppose, both videos. Brilliant stuff. Well, they wouldn't have watched it if it wasn't worth watching, boys, you know? So, uh, and I've I've watched them both. Uh, the one video I've got to ask yesterday, um, in a word, bastard freezing. Uh, where was that shot? Uh, do you decide yourselves, I know this is where we're going to shoot this video, and why the hell there and not someplace like, I don't know, Hawaii's nice this time of year, right? <laughs> It's funny because as soon as we finished that shoot, I said, you know, next time, can we go like Barbados or Hawaii or somewhere nice? Blackpool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Blackpool will do. But yeah. <laughs> so so where was where it exactly was, was the shoot for that? It was uh, at the top of Bamford Edge. In Derbyshire. In, yeah, in Derbyshire. Yeah. Um, which is a pretty, pretty incredible looking place, regardless of the weather. Yeah. It's just a... Uh, <clears throat> It, it's 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 a big hill. I'm I'm gonna call it a mountain. Let's but, call it a mountain. Uh, it felt like a mountain. <laughs> yeah, we had to climb it. Um, but because of just the way this this particular edge is, well, it's how it's ended up. The view itself, because it goes down into a valley, just looks like you're thousands of feet into the air, and mm. it just keeps going and going and going. So we got really lucky with the weather because we knew it was going to be a bit snowy and it was wintry anyway. But yeah. The week leading up, it just hurled it down with snow every day. And where we were, where we positioned ourselves, no one had really touched it. And it just looked like we were on our own at the, on, on the top of Everest. It was amazing. It did, totally. I, mean, we, we I thought it had a look at the highlands of Scotland or something, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, we planned the whole thing ourselves. And we sort of like, we, we worked with a guy called Gaius Brown, who's like, he's a young kid, but he's such a good uh videographer like he he sort of really got us i think so we we worked with him on it and and then the subsequent videos too um but we had this sort of vision in mind and we were thinking actually of going up to scotland <clears throat> and renting a snow machine because we're like we need we want this scenery and we want the snow and then it just so happened that that week it absolutely belted it down with snow brilliant and it just couldn't have been better and then that morning as well when we got there to shoot the sun came out, so it just sort of really made the sort of scenery pop and stuff. You could see for miles. It was fucking awesome. Wicked, man. <laughs> Wicked. Fantastic. Nice. No, it's, it's a great video. Uh, do, did you have access via a vehicle there to get all the gear up and all that? Or was it literally a case of you had to no. lug everything up on your backs? <laughs> we, had, we had a caravan that ended up getting crashed at the bottom of the hill. Yeah. Um, because the road was sheet ice, so we could only get so far up. So at that point, it was abandon the cars, get all the gear. We had drum kits on our backs, and Chris had his bass and happened to fall over at least 12 <laughs> times, 
minimum throughout like, the day. It I happens. Felt like I'd, I'd concussed myself by the end of the day, <laughs> big time. <laughs> but yeah, we had to carry it up, of carry it up ourselves. But the, the drive up, there's no road access there. You kind of yeah. drive up a bit of a country path. It stops, and then there's like a like a cattle gate. You walk over, and then you you have to do the the ascent. Mm. Um, but I remember, I remember, uh, <laughs> I remember driving up and. I got about two thirds of the way up to where we were meeting everyone, and my car just slowed and then slowed and then stopped. And then oh, I no. had my foot on the accelerator, but I was going backwards. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is it. Here and then go. I came up after you, <laughs> and he'd already abandoned his car and he was walking, and I drove straight past him because I just thought, <laughs> if I stop, yeah, I'm not going to get well, my, mistake, my mistake was I lacked confidence, and I thought, am I definitely in the right place? And then I stopped, <laughs> and then it was game over, whereas you were like, this is it. This is <laughs> this is the place. I'm committed. I'm yeah. going. Do you That's know where it. you're going? No, but I'm doing it anyway. Yeah. I think in conditions like that, you've nailed it there. It's like you either you're gonna sink or you're gonna swim. You you either commit to it or or you don't, basically. If you don't, like yourself, you yeah. ended up going backwards, Chris. Um, <laughs> and with yourself, Dan, you committed, you took the bull by the horns, and boom, off you go. You know, you've, you've just got to go for it, I think, guys. But uh, I do love a story behind these videos. There's always a story, and it's always nice to hear what actually happened on the day, what ordeals you went through on the day. And by the sound yeah. of things, it was a bit of an ordeal. But, uh, but you know, you had the results in the end. It's, yeah. it's a cracking little video. It is. It's really good. And how can 16,000 people be wrong, right? Yeah, true. Can't argue with the numbers, can you? <laughs> can you act? It's like, <laughs> can you act? So in terms of writing, um, is there anyone that takes the lead on that? Or do you, do you all jump in? Do you, do you jump in, perhaps, Chris, with a bit of bass? So I come up with a bass line. Uh, you know, people put bits on. Who, who does all the writing? Is, a, well, is it a group a, um, effort? <laughs> yeah, I would, I would say it's a group effort. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the material is kind of done like Dan will do a lot of the material and then Dan and Mike have got together and written a lot of the stuff. There's a few songs written before, before I joined the band, but with like sort of the tracks that are on the album and some of the singles, and yeah, it's definitely a group effort. We're not one of those bands where one person does everything mm. and, and kind of it, you know, we're all, we're like, a, we're like a team. So mm. I definitely said the album itself is definitely a group effort. Brilliant stuff. Excellent. I think it's better that way, isn't it? If, if everyone if everyone mucks in, everyone puts their little bit into the little bit of ingredients. Was that a fly then? <laughs> Did you catch a fly? Yeah, there's a, there's a bee's nest. There's a bee's oh, there. fantastic. Oh, be careful. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Tread carefully, gents. Keep very still. But uh, yeah, it's, as I right said, bees. it's... Bees are right. It's the wasps you want to watch out for. Yeah. Yeah, as long as you don't get a shirty with a bee. That's it. No, no, they're right. Leave them in peace. They tend to leave them in peace. It's the wasps it is. I got stuck on some traffic lights the one day crossing the road, and there's this wasp hovering in front of me, and I'm just there. You've got to cross the road to the one set of traffic lights. There's traffic on both sides, and then you've got to cross the other to get to Cardiff City Centre, and there's this wasp just there hovering. I give him a little nudge like that. All of a sudden, he twists his ass right in the side of my neck. Zap! It's like, oh! I was on my way to work as well. (laughs) Ruined my whole day. What a bastard. But uh, yeah, and they, they live to sting there's, another day, wasps, too, as well. I know that's the worst part, isn't it? At least with like, uh, like bees understand that if I'm going to do this, again, it's back to the car. You've got to commit. Exactly. And that, that's it. Whereas wasps can just live to sting another day. But there are few fears worse in life than being in your car with a window down and you see a wasp coming towards yeah, the car. Yeah, it's horrific. And, you click the switch and it, it's electric window, so you're out of control. You're just going to sit there and go, That's oh it, you've had it. Just, just please, please, go like, oh. <laughs> yeah, just pull over and abandon the vehicle. That's what I do. I've no, they evil little I've things. Like, a wasp has got in my car and I've parked it and got out. Yeah, I've nah, been there, man. Been there. You know, it's, it's, it's a common thing. Trust me. People don't care to admit yeah. this, but it happens all the time. I'm sure my ex wife was a wasp as well. So that's another story for a whole other day. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if everyone chucks a little bit, drifting off topic, sorry boys, if everyone chucks a little bit in, does their own little bit, puts their own little sizzle to the steak, I think everyone enjoys it more, particularly in gigs and what have you Then everyone's doing their own thing, their own piece of creativity, I think that goes a long way, I've been in bands myself as well, um, so uh, yeah, nice one. So, in terms of gigs, have you actually gigged yet, as you got together in lockdown, have you yeah. actually, you have, yeah? Tell us about your gigs. How's that gone? Where have you gigged? How many show, have you done? Um, we played. We played our first show actually. Um, 
last, last month, uh, at the end of last month. It was actually on the 25th of June because that's when the world was supposed to be opening up a couple of days before. Yeah, apparently. Got and all that. So we ended up playing a, a bit of a, uh, a post-lockdown show that wasn't quite post-lockdown. <laughs> um, and uh, so it was still social distance, but it was awesome. Like it was in Oldham and I'm pretty sure we sold the place out. Yeah. Um, and it went down really well. And it's like, I mean, it's crazy to think when we were up there and I was like singing the songs and there's people there singing the lyrics back. And it's mm. like, we've literally not played a show yet. This is the first show and there's people already singing the songs back to us. So that's amazing. Yeah. That's a pretty overwhelming feeling. Like that's really cool that people care enough and people like the material enough to do that. Um, so yeah, that was our first show. And then, uh, it's uh, all systems go now booking shows trying to get out there we've got a show um next wednesday which is the 28th, 28th blackpool which is in blackpool yeah and then we've got a show on wednesday the 4th which is the wednesday after which is it at the black heart in london awesome stuff awesome any plans to come on over the bridge gents we'll come anywhere that will have us fantastic anywhere what what are you how big is your living room? <laughs> oh, it's massive, guys. It's massive. You know, I've just uh, I'm just changing settees as well to make a little more room. So we'll set up a little stage there for you. Yeah, we'll make that happen. Really? We'll, uh, yeah. I'm not, hey, I'm not joking, boys. I'm not joking. We'll uh, we, we'll pencil it in after this. No worries at all. I got a big garden out there as well. Yeah, we, we can make it happen. Give the neighbors something to oh, talk nice. about. Fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Excellent stuff. Nah, seriously, it'd be nice to see you over the bridge. So uh, if we can get you over here, uh, and if you do end up winding up over here, keep in touch. Give us a, <laughs> give us a shout, and uh, yeah. I'll uh, I'll hook up with you. That'd be fantastic. Um, so you've yeah. you've got your third single coming out very soon. A little birdie tells me. Um, tell us That's a little true. bit about that. When is it out? Uh, what can we expect uh, from this? The song is out tomorrow, which is Friday. The what day is tomorrow? Tomorrow 22nd. is the twenty third. Twenty third. Twenty third. Uh, and that's uh, it's called Fight Me, and it's epic, and it's got an awesome video like the other two. And I'm not going to give too much away because you need to watch it, but it's going to be sweet. Excellent stuff. I did see the video myself earlier on today. Uh, again, quality. I like the setting as well for that video. I, I do like the setting. Again, I'm not going to give too much away myself. I'm not going to ask too much about it. People need to get onto YouTube. They need to watch it for themselves. Uh, so that's called Fight Me. That's out tomorrow. And where can people get it from? Uh, it's available on everywhere. all streaming services and YouTube and <laughs> everywhere where people usually listen to music these days. Oh. oh. We can, still, we can yeah. still hear you. We can still hear you. We had a nice little uh, <laughs> little mug shot there and reminded me of uh, a night in the cells in the 90s, but that's another story. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> anywhere and everywhere. Yeah, any, uh, is it just uh, a download or are people able to get hold of CDs, vinyls and things as well? Uh, or streaming sites, streaming sites, YouTube. Uh, the single won't be out physical, but we're looking at doing the album as a physical release, vinyl and CDs and stuff later on in the year. So you'll yeah, be able to get stuff. it. Brilliant. That's fantastic. Look forward to that one. So the album, you've moved on to the album. Now let's talk a little bit about that then. So September time we're looking at for that? Yeah, the preliminary release date is the 4th of September. 3rd of September. 3rd of, September. of September. A day from September. <laughs> <laughs> Early September. And, uh, yeah, September. Uh, but it could potentially change. <clears throat> We're, we're looking at sort of uh, labels and all that sort of situation. So depending on what goes off with that, it might move, but that's the preliminary day. Excellent stuff. Well, we keep a lookout for that. So if, if people are interested in finding out a bit more about you guys, where can we, uh, where can we look? Where can we find you with your online presence? Best place to hit us up is every social media platform you can possibly think of. We're on there pretty much. Excellent. Well, we're not on MySpace and Bebo, but you ah, get, you get just <laughs> website is just deadromantic.com. That's got a link to everything. Yeah. Deadromantic.com will lead you to everything you could possibly hope and dream of. Excellent that's stuff. Anything that, to do with Dead Romantic. That opens up the, the, the rabbit hole, does it? You'll find us. 
brilliant stuff. Well, we'll chuck the links into the description as well for you, gents. All right. So uh, happy days. Fantastic. So what's what's next for Dead Romantic then, gents? What's what's next for you, boys? What can we expect to see? We're we're losing you. You're losing me? I, I get that all the time. Uh, so I was just asking, what's what's next for you guys? Shows, what can we expect? shows, and more shows. Fantastic stuff. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, I look forward to, to keeping up to date with those. If you do get over the bridge, please let me know. And we'll uh, we'll hook up and have a beer. Several, in fact. Uh, I wish you all the very best tomorrow with the launch of the new single, Fight Me. Everybody listening, everybody watching, go out, treat yourselves, download it, buy it, stream it. Make the boys happy. Uh, gentlemen, in closing, yeah. before we wrap up, are there any plugs, shout outs, acknowledgements, anything we've missed out that you want to chuck in there? No? Bit of a delay? We didn't, we didn't miss it. Nothing we missed out. Um, I just want to say the shows at Blackpool and at London are going to be epic. We've been putting some hours in rehearsing. They're going to be sick, so come on down. We have a um, little competition sort of raffle thing going on at the minute. So if you buy a ticket for the Waterloo show at Blackpool or the Black Park show in Camden, uh, you'll be entered into a prize draw to win one of 10 free Dead Romantic T-shirts that we're giving away as a prize that you can collect on the night. So if you go to our website, all the details are there and on our Instagram and Facebook and all that. So Awesome easy, stuff. Easy. Fantastic. Doesn't get much easier than that, does it? Fantastic. Brilliant. Okay, guys. Well, I'm going to love you and leave you with that bees nest there. Look after yourselves. Take care. And I'll see you again down the line. Dead Romantic. Buy the single, guys. Buy the album in September. Dead Romantic. Woohoo!